Hi, welcome to Troubadour's videos. Today we're going to conduct a three-way SLI benchmark test using the Asus P6T7WS supercomputer motherboard. Here are the test system specs. The motherboard is the Asus P6T7 supercomputer. CPU is the Intel Core i7-975. Memory is OCZ Blade at PC3-1600. 2000 MHz timed at 78720. The GPUs we're going to be rolling with today are EVJ's GTX 285s in 3-way SLI. For the physics card we're going to use the EVJ 9800 GT and the graphics drivers are the 186.08 series drivers. We're using the Thermaltake Tough Power 1200 Watt Modular Power Supply. The hard disk drive today is the Velociraptor 150 gig version. Water cooling we're using Coulant's ERM 3K4U5 system which is a 5 loop water cooling system. CPU water block is the EK Supreme and the operating system is Windows 7 Release Candidate. Here's the Asus P6T7 WS or Workstation Supercomputer Motherboard mounted on the test bench. The CPU we're going to be using today is Intel's Core i7-975 Extreme Edition CPU. With this motherboard mounted on the test rig you can clearly see the EK Supreme water block and the OCZ memory modules. Let's go ahead and load in the graphics cards of choice today. These are EVJ's GTX 285 SSC or Super Super Clock Edition GPUs. These cards will be mounted in 3-way SLI and benched using SSC or Super Super Clock settings as well as a small overclock to see how this board performs under 3-way SLI conditions. We're also going to be installing an EVJ 9800 GT to take charge of the physics engine during these benchmarks. With all these cards in place, let's fire up this PC, run the benchmarks and start having some fun. The P6T7 motherboard comes with a GP diagnostics card. This card itself is a rather sloppy fit, but nonetheless gets the job done. On the GPU Diagnostics card we have a very simple configuration of an on-off button, reset button and a simple debug display. The P6T7 also comes with a really cool heartbeat function. This lights up the Asus logo in the middle of the motherboard, but these LEDs are so bright you can even see them through the graphics card vents at the back of the PC. I must say I'm very impressed with the OCZ Blade memory modules. These modules run blazing fast at 2000 MHz and timings of 78720. So let's bench this beast and see exactly what the Asus P6T7WS supercomputer motherboard is capable of, especially while armed with this arsenal of uber hardware. For these benchmarks we're going to be firstly running a stock configuration with the CPU running 3.33 GHz and the GPUs running SSC settings with a core at 702 MHz, linked shader, 1323 in the memory and the fan set to auto. The overclock settings we're using is a mild overclock on the CPU. We're going to overclock to 4.5 GHz. The GPUs we're going to overclock to 740 MHz on the core, linked shader, 1497 MHz on the memory and run the fan at 100%. Each configuration and resolution is going to be ran 10 times through the benchmark today and then we're only going to concentrate on the median results. We're going to discard the lowest and the highest results from the benchmarks. This is to remove any possibility of system lags or glitches with the Windows 7 operating system that will provide unnecessarily or unrealistically low or high results. And first up is the Crisis Benchmark. This benchmark is well established and needs no introduction to anyone. We're going to be running the settings on this Crisis Benchmark the very high or the highest settings available. So let's check out the results from the stock configuration of this hardware. 
Now let's go ahead and apply the overclock and see what results we get with a mild overclock. And now onto the Crisis Warhead benchmark. Crisis Warhead is a somewhat optimized version of Crisis, so let's see exactly what results we can get off this benchmark. Here are the results from the stock configuration, but let's see exactly what we get with a slight overclock on this motherboard. And onto the Far Cry 2 benchmark, let's see what results we can get from this benchmark using stock and overclock configurations. And here's a new benchmark for us, the Street Fighter 4 benchmark. Again we're going to be using all the PC settings and turning those to the highest possible settings available. So let's see exactly what results we can get from Street Fighter 4 using standard clock and overclock conditions. Who will come out on top? Fight! So let's check out the results and see exactly what we get from the Street Fighter 4 benchmark. Whoa! 31,754 score points or 428.5 frames per second on the Street Fighter 4 benchmark and 1920 by 1200. As you can see here, ramping those settings to the highest possible detail settings in the benchmark reduces that frame rate to 192.5. 28 frames per second. One. Running 2560 by 1600 with no anti aliasing pulls a steady 377.3 frames per second. And finally, running all the settings to the maximum possible configuration on this benchmark renders 183.98 frames per second or 8192 score points. And finally, let's run the 3 Mark Vantage benchmark and see exactly what results we can get from this motherboard using 3-way SLI. In stock configuration, we get 34,928 score points, or 31,307 on the GPU, 53,489 on the CPU. Whoa! With a mild overclock, we get 39,369 performance points with a GPU score of 35,150 and a CPU score of 61,515 points. The Asus P6T7WS Supercomputer Motherboard is a phenomenal piece of equipment. As you saw here today in 3-way SLI configuration with a 975 CPU, it's more than capable of maxing out many of the modern game benchmarks out there, as well as just uh, getting shy of 40,000 performance points on the 3D Mark Vantage benchmark. I definitely think the EVJ X58 Classified Motherboard has some serious competition on its hands. Once again, I hope you guys enjoyed this video, especially my subscribers, and feel free to subscribe if you wish to stay up to date with the latest and greatest in gaming and PC hardware. Thanks again and take care.